Hey, did you ever try to perfect the dance moves to Thriller only to find out you have a complete lack of rhythm? Do you have trouble communicating with the living, preferring the groans, moans, and occasional screeches of the recently reanimated? Well, congratulations! You might be a necromancer. But what is a necromancer? Well, pull up a gravestone, pick out your favorite skull, and try to be jolly, even though spooky season is officially over. The f the f the f is in the air. The f there's white shit everywhere. What is it about dead things that some people can't get enough of? Whether you're a taxidermist or one of those guys who sticks bugs to the wall, some folks just have a fascination with being surrounded by dead stuff. It's not my cup of tea, thanks. I like my skeletons made of plastic with the faintest smell of ammonia, but I guess to each their own. No, a true necromancer likes their corpses like I like my coffee. Cold, miserably bitter, and filled with enough espresso to wake the dead. But what makes the necromancer stand out from the other wizard subclasses, and why does necromancy garner such a unique reputation? Well, for starters, necromancy is one of those things that everyone kinda knows about but doesn't mention in polite company. For example, we all know that the local cleric is technically dabbling in the dark arts when they bring your puppy back after it was hit by a refrigerator repair truck. But we don't call him out on it because Sparky's healed up and better than ever. But what do you need to do to become the bad boy of the spellcasting pop group? Well, like most things evil in the world of D&D, you just start out as a wizard. Oh, what's that? You thought warlocks were the go-to evil spellcaster? Yeah, right. Every wizard from Gale to Karsis seems to be trying to ascend to godhood for some goddamn reason, and that always goes goes real well. But wizards are the favorite class of the company that makes D&D for some reason, so they get a lot of stuff, starting with spellcasting. This comes with your very own handy dandy notebook that you can fill with six spells right out the gate, learning two more with each wizard level, and the ability to copy any spells you find into the notebook, providing you have the time and gold to do so. You also get arcane recovery to recover spell slots on a short rest that have a combined level of half your wizard level rounded up, but caps out at fifth level spells. Since your main tool is whatever you got stored up in that noggin, it's nice to know that you get a refresher in between fights instead of always being the guy trying to take a full night's sleep after three hours of adventuring. But it's the second level where our wizard gets to pick their school, and of course we're going with the scariest option. But, man... I just miss spooky season. Skelly boys, black cats, pumpkins, me and my politically charged Halloween costume, the slutty ballot. I just wish there was a way to, you know, combine these two seasons. <sighs>It was the nightmare before Christmas, and through the town swept what could only be known as a plague of undeath. Stockings were hung on grisly gravestones full of posies and mums, and of course, lots of bones. There were families asleep all snug for the night, not knowing that soon they'd behold such a fright, for they dreamed of nutcrackers and fairies and dancers, unaware of the threat from a cruel necromancer. With a skill in dark arts and talent to flaunt, most would call you a necro-savant. You can learn any spell scrolls you happen to find, but your favorite are always the black magic kind. For half time and gold, you can copy these spells, cause who do the voodoo that you do so well. But being a wizard, you're naturally meek, your mind may be strong, but your muscles are weak, and while brawn might not be your forte regardless, you can stay on your feet with the gruesome Grim Harvest. Your cruelty infamous, like twisting the knife, you regain health when taking a life, though you must cast a spell of first level or more, the hit points are worth it on that, I am sure. The equal twice the spell's level, hey isn't that fancy, or three times if it happens to lean necromancy. But bouncing up to sixth level to see what is new, because here we can finally gather our crew. While others see corpses scattered around, we see new friends we can pull from the ground. With a wave and a twist, we enchant our hall and summon a party of undead thralls. We look in our spellbook to find anime dead, feeling the townsfolk with uneasy dread as we bring back the bones of your uncle named Lance and then Doug in the next grave joins the skeleton dance. Your technique is flawless, your skill sublime, this lets you raise dead two at a time. But they're also more hardy with hit points to spare and can do some more damage so monsters beware. But as we get better and continue to quest, our necromancer becomes inured to death. At 10th level, we take this buff for instance, gaining a bunch of necrotic resistance. Who knew spending so much time with the gloom could help you stave off impending doom? But that's not all. We get another boost, as luckily our hit points can't be reduced. So while you'll never be beefy or burly or brawny, at least with undead, you're a little less scrawny. 
bouncing up once again 14th levels ahead where we finally are able to command the undead. If someone is foolish enough they can try to use an undead against the necromancy guy, you'll take control of their friend and up in the balance because only you are the master of the soullessly challenged. By spending your action on that thing from the grave, you can force them to succeed on a charisma save. To pass, they must roll your DC or greater, but when they fail, they'll turn on their creator. However, it's tricky on those that are sharp, be wary of creatures that know Shakespeare by heart. They can re-roll the save upon every hour and may turn on you once regaining their power. So use this gift carefully and you'll be quite odd, but it's probably best not to try this on Strahd. But at level 18, we become a spellmaster, a marvelous feat for any spellcaster, letting you pick two spells from levels 1 and 2, and those spells become free, but only to you. Silvery Barbs and Misty Step are natural picks for a re-roll of the dice or to get away quick, but to stay in in character, what can I say, grab sickness and enfeeblement, which are both rays. But it's 20th level where this wizard is capped and we choose one last spell for our spooky chap. This one third level, at least that's what I read, and I think he gotta go with summon undead. You can cast this for free as a signature spell and summon a spooky from the bottom of hell, which can take on a form that is ghostly or skelly or a zombie-like creature that's pretty damn smelly. But it's an amazing tool when you're in a pinch to ensure an escape or have victory clinched. So that's all I've got, at least this time. Unfortunately, I'm about out of rhymes, but while this subclass is a downer, I hope your Christmas is bright. A happy holidays to all, and to all a good fright. So, that's the Necromancer, more or less, but among the wizards, is it the best? Stop it. I'm out of rhymes. Best is relative, of course, but the Necromancer is pretty goddamn good for a few reasons. For starters, while plenty of classes can cast necromancy spells, you are by far the best at keeping those critters around. For instance, with just your animate dead spell, as long as you've already raised them from the ground once before, you can re-up that spell on up to four zombies or skelly boys once a day and keep them in the party without having to expend additional spell slots. Or cast create Megan? Megan? I don't know. To create some creepy Chucky dolls and avoid the reduction of hit points penalty because of your inure to death ability. But your pride and joy spell is going to be Finger of Death. Not only does a creature take a stupid amount of necrotic damage at 7d8 plus 30, if this kills the creature, they raise next turn as a zombie permanently under your control. With a little time and strategy, this is your ticket to a legion of undead soldiers and the ability to prove to your DM who the real big bad evil guy of the campaign is. But really, this wizard is just built for summons and crowd control and destroying turn economy. Kind of like the shepherd druid, but with less squirrels and more skeletons. And seeing as this is basically the bachelor degree you have to complete before you move on to a lich graduate program, it makes sense for it to be pretty damn powerful. Just make sure you don't run into any goody two-shoes paladins who get a bee in their bonnet over a little corpse desecration. They're dead! Who are we hurting? So if you have a framed photo of David McCallum, a.k.a. Donald Mallard, a.k.a. Ducky from NCIS hung up on your wall, are a little too giddy at the prospect of finding roadkill on the side of the highway, and are the main reason mausoleums now come with vault doors and combination locks, guess what? You might be a necromancer. To the window, to the wall Till the sweat drops down my ball Until all these bitches crawl Ah, skeet, skeet, goddamn Hey guys, thanks for watching. This will be my last episode for the year as I'm taking a little break for the holidays, but I may have some shorts and other stuff planned in the meantime. If you like what I make, there is never a better time to send an episode to a friend, especially if they play one of these subclasses, but I'm happy there's just people out there who will bother to hear me ramble and speak and rhyme like a lunatic. Well, until next rambling, I hope you have a great holiday, and I'll see you soon.